Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Mezco 112 Collective LA Comic Con exclusive Invincible Iron Man and let's take a really quick look at the packaging. We're going to try to run through this because there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about on this figure and we got to get to it. So anyways, the packaging looks really cool. It has like a matte black and some gold. You have Invincible Iron Man in the center and I like the way this looks. It really reminds me of like old school Iron Man comics. At the bottom, it says Marvel. Up here you have the Mezco exclusive sticker and that all looks great and then on the side of the box you have a Iron Man logo and then on the back of the box you have some really nice looking Iron Man artwork and the package is collector friendly as usual it's the smaller package that Mezco tends to use for their exclusive figures and it's not big and bulky like the the package that they use for their standard figures so I'm a fan of it but anyways let's get to it here we go, here's Iron Man right out of the box, and this figure is really, really impressive. Right away, this thing just has a really nice, high quality feel to it. I was really surprised by how heavy he was. I didn't realize how much die cast was going to be on this figure, but he's very heavy, and he feels very nice and sturdy. There are some parts that feel a little flimsy that kind of make me nervous, especially the hips. We'll get into that a little bit more. But the overall sculpt and design of this thing looks really, really nice. And I love the matte black against the gold, and then you have like the shinier black to kind of accent it and break up the matte black. It's just really, really nice. And let's check it all out. Look at all the sculpt work there. I love all these panels and rivets and things like that. It all looks awesome. And then the boots kind of look like classic looking Iron Man. And the box says that this is Mark 42, but it's not very accurate to the Mark 42 look in the comic books. The Mark 42 in the comics has a lot more lights and things like that. And I think if they would have made, you know, just put some red around here or just in here, like kind of like what they have there. If they did that in a few other spots, I think people would be more forgiving uh, with the inaccuracies because at least it would have made it seem like they made an attempt to make it a little bit different from the classic version. As far as I can tell, this is just a repaint of the classic version. So some people kind of got upset and... Uh, we're saying that this isn't really the Mark 42 armor. It's the Mark 42 colors, and it's kind of inspired by the Marvel Now look, but it's not quite Mark 42. But for me, I'm okay with it because I really like the way that it looks. I love the gold and black, and I like the, the style of the classic armor. But yeah, the overall sculpt on this thing is really, really nice. This thing is beautiful. Check it out. I love the gold and the black. And there's just little details everywhere. Look, you have some like rivets right there. And one thing that's kind of weird is this belt piece is loose, so it just kind of hangs around. And, I mean, it's fine, but it does make it kind of difficult to take these things off. Because the, everything on this figure is, is really, really tight, so it's really hard to get these off and, and change them out. As you can see here, you kind of have to hold the belt down and mess with it. They'll come off, and you could take those off to uh, put on some accessories, and we'll get into that later. But yeah, it's really, really tight. And even the arc reactor was really, really tight. I had to get a screwdriver in there, a flathead screwdriver, and just very carefully lift it up. And once I got it off for the first time, it, it was fine, and now it comes off pretty easy. But yeah, you just it, pop this off here. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, and then you can put on his little effect. And we'll look at all the effects and the accessories a little bit later. But yeah, you want to be really careful when handling that arc reactor piece. And same thing with the front of the helmet. It's very hard to get this off, especially the first time that you do it. Uh, once you do it a couple times, it gets a little bit easier. But the first time, I thought I almost broke it. But yeah, let's see here. You could just take it off like that. And there's the, the exposed Tony Stark face. And I think it looks pretty good. I know a lot of people were hating on it. And it does look a little soft. But for the most part, it looks really nice. I think the mustache should have been a little bit darker. And I think a lot more uh, people would have liked it a lot more. And this face mask is magnetic. It could sit on the top of the head like that. And check that out. How cool is that? But you can see some paint chipping on the side of the mask there because it sits under this little earpiece. And it just... I, I, can't, I can't remember if it was like that when I first took it off. Maybe it was. Maybe it's like the paint that kind of got stuck to that. And maybe that's why it was so hard to take it off in the first place. But... Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. I, I wish there was a better way that they did that. But still, it's hard to see it just uh, just looking at it here, zoomed in with the camera and stuff. Of course, you could see it. But anyways, you, you want to be careful with all that. With handling the mask in general, you want to be very careful. But look at that. That's cool. I can't think of any other figure that has like a, a Tony Stark face like this where the mask could flip up. Maybe one of the Sentinel figures could do stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. I don't have any of those. But yeah, this is so cool. I love this thing. And uh, check this out too, on the inside of the mask you have like the uh, Iron Man kind of monitor effect going on. That is crazy. It's just a little sticker that's on there, but it is still very cool. 
And real quickly back to the face sculpt, I think they did a really good job with it. I do like the way that the pads look on the top of the head and on the chin. I think that's pretty unique. And I do think the facial expression does capture Tony Stark pretty well. I'd say that it does look a little tired or something. His eyes look a little droopy. But uh, other than that, I think that it's pretty nice. And now for the accessories, of course he comes with a bunch of different sets of hands. First off, we have a pair of fists. And then we have a pair of open relaxed hands. And then we have a set of flat hands that can be used to hold on to his energy blasts. And I really like these flat hands because even when they don't have the energy blast, they look kind of cool because the peg holes are painted red. And I really like that small, small little detail, but I thought it was cool. And then it comes with two of these rocket effects that look like they're firing from his forearm. And then we have the arc reactor blast effect. And then he has these things that look like he's firing missiles from his little hip discs. And then he has these rocket booster effects for the bottom of his feet. And all of the accessories are very well done. The blast effects have like a translucent red effect to them. Same thing with the arc reactor blast effect. All of them look really, really nice. And then the little uh, forearm rocket, I guess you could say. You can see the little rocket at the end of the flame there. That looks really good. And same thing with the, the hip rockets. And pretty much all these things go, the way that all these things go on is pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty standard action figure stuff. Like the blast effects go plugged right into his hands here. And they fit in there nice and snug. And for the arc reactor effect, you just have to take, take the little cover that off. And then you just stick this on there. And again, it stays on there nice and snug. You don't have to worry about it falling out or anything. And then for the forearm rockets... This little piece on the forearm rotates around, so you could put it however you want. It actually rotates separate from the hand, as you could see. And there's a little hole right there, and you just insert the, the tab at the end of the flame right into there. Again, just standard, standard action figure stuff. Nothing crazy complicated. And for the hip rocket, you have this piece here. You just pull this off. You have to be very, very careful with this because it's really, really tight on there. And this piece this piece is plastic. So when you're messing with this, you want to be very careful not to force it or anything because you don't want to break this thing. But yeah. So once you get it off once, it, it kind of slides off a little easy. But the same can't be said for this. This is really, really tight getting it on there. So I'm always kind of nervous when I'm messing with it. So let me show you how you get it on here. I'd suggest like wiggling it on very, very slowly because you don't want to slip and snap off the flame effect there that would be a tragedy so once you get it on there it looks very very cool check that out but when you get it off you have to be very careful too. just wiggle it off very slowly please be patient with the figure because it would be it would suck if you broke something on here because you were just kind of forcing it and going crazy so it'll it'll take a second but let's see should i sit here and do it Let's go for it. So, yeah, you just got to wiggle it off very, very slowly. And, and there you go. But it's all very tight. It's, it's kind of like a gift and a curse because you want the things to sit on there snug and not fall off. But you also want to be able to take them off safely without uh, risking damaging your figure. So you might want to work something out to get that to work. It looks like the paint is the problem. The paint on the peg is kind of making it tough to get it on there. So I do appreciate that they made it so these things aren't going to fall off, but it's very risky. So be careful when you're messing with this figure. Uh, I really want to stress that, that you got to be patient when you're, when you're doing certain things with this guy because you, you really do not want to break it. And then, of course, he does have the light-up feature. And I do like the way that they did this. You have this little compartment back here, and you could just flip this up take it off and then there's all the the stuff that you have you could take this piece off and that's where the batteries go and then you have the little switch right here all you do is flip the switch stick this back on there and then it's all hidden that's really cool uh some other iron man figures that have the light up feature don't have the hit the switch hidden so i'm i'm really happy that mezco went ahead and did it like that but check that out it's a little hard to see because of my lights here but yeah look at that that's so cool it would have been awesome if they had a way to light up the eyes too on the head, but you know, that's asking a lot. Um, I'm sure it would have been really difficult to have the unmasked head and the light up feature. Maybe they could have did alternative heads and like a, you know, a, the head with its own batteries and stuff like that. But you know, again, that's asking a lot. But anyways, check that out. That is cool. First he comes with the standard Mezco stand, and here he is on that with all the blast effects on him. And I think that looks pretty badass, but I would be a little worried 
about leaving him on the stand for too long because the weight of the figure might make the stand collapse after a while. Um, the stand is just held together by screws and I just don't think that they will hold him for that long or if some something like bumps into the, the shelf that you have him on, I think that the, the stand will kind of buckle with the weight of the figure itself. So he does look cool on there, but I'd be very hesitant to leave him on there for an extended period of time. And for size comparisons, I know that people are really curious to see how he's gonna fit into uh, various different lines. So I'm gonna go all over the place with it, starting with the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Raphael and the Storm Collectibles Mike Tyson. And then here we have the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And I'd say he's a little bit too big for Marvel Legends. And here he is next to the Marvel Select Thor and Marvel Select Hawkeye. And I'd also say he's a little too small for Marvel Select figures. And here we have the Disney Store exclusive Thor and the Marvel Legends Marvel Now Captain America. And then now we have the Mezco 112 Collective Modern Captain America and Mezco 112 Collective Tactical Suit Punisher. And I think he fits in really good with them. And then here we have the Figure Arts Iron Man from Civil War. I always forget which mark it is. And the Comic Cape Iron Man from Iron Man 2, I believe it is. Once again, I always forget the marks on these things. And then here we have the Marvel Legends Classic Iron Man and Marvel Legends Bleeding Edge Iron Man. And then we have the Invincible Iron Man and the Extremis Iron Man. So his scale's a little strange. He feels like a little bit big for a six inch figure, but he fits in, he fits in perfect with Mezco and he looks pretty good with Marvel Legends. So that should keep most people happy. And now onto the articulation. For the most part, it has a really nice setup, but there are a few things that I wish were a little bit different, but let's get into it here. His head is able to move side to side. And then he has movement where the head and the neck meet and where the neck and the torso meet. But you have to be very careful when you're moving his head around because you don't want to scrape it against the metal chest plate here. But you can get his head to look all the way down to about there. And then you could get him to look pretty much all the way up so you could get him into some pretty nice flight poses. And then for the torso, it seems like it has the typical Mezco setup where it has the mid torso cut and then a joint at the waist. And the waist seems to move a little bit, but not much. It seems like it pretty much only goes back, and it's only a tiny bit. Could kind of tilt to the side. You're definitely going to get most of your movement from the mid-torso joint, and that joint is pretty decent. Let's see how much it crunches here. Not much at all, but, you know, it's a guy in armor. What are you going to do? It's not too bad. But you can get it to look to go back a lot, which is nice for flight poses once again. So that's pretty good. But the forward movement... You know is limited but that's to be expected i'm not too too upset about that because there's definitely some there so that's cool and then it can kind of go side to side again not much but a pretty decent amount and then you have swivel here you're not you're probably not going to want to twist it all the way around it might be possible but i'm not going to do it and again not not really any swivel at the waist and let's see what else we have going on here and now the hips. The hips is what I wish was a little bit different. When I did my little first impression video, I mentioned that I wish that the hips could drop down a little bit like a figure arts figure. And a lot of people in the comments said that it can. And I, I mean, I don't know, I disagree. It does drop down a little bit, but it's still really tough to deal with. You can drop it down, but it's, it's nothing like a figure arts figure. A figure arts figure... Uh, the legs drop down really smooth and you're able to move it around for the most part. With a lot of import figures, that's pretty much how it is. With this figure, you have to work it down and it, it's not very smooth, you know. But I guess you could say it does go down a little bit enough to... Actually, hold on one second. Let me work with it a little bit more. Again, this is uh, you got to have patience with this figure. So you could get it to go down a little bit. As you could see, it dropped down slightly. Just barely enough to... to uh, allow you to move his leg up a little bit but still you want to be very careful because the the uh, hip part or pelvis or whatever you want to call it is metal and then so is the leg so if you if you rub the metal on metal the paint's going to chip and that would suck so you want to be very careful before you just grab this and start posing it you kind of want to work with it as you can see i got it to go a little bit more there so i mean that that is pretty cool but still, it's not. It doesn't drop down as smoothly as like a figure arts figure. But yeah, the the hip joint here does allow for some movement to the side. So that's pretty nice. But again, you want to be very careful with the hip joints because they're plastic. So there's a bunch of metal on here, and then plastic hip joints. I wish they I wish they could have done that differently, 
maybe if the joint it i mean if the ball joint was plastic but the peg inside was metal maybe that would have worked but who knows maybe maybe uh maybe that doesn't make sense but i don't know i i, I really wish this was more sturdy because this this really makes me nervous with this figure but uh yeah so you want to be careful there but anyways it could go back to about there and then you have the upper thigh swivel and as i said you could bring it to the side and I've seen some people get some crazy poses out of this Iron Man figure. I, I'm scared to push it to the limits, to be honest with you. Maybe when I get the standard release, I'll I'll push it a little bit further. But with this one, yeah, I just don't want to do anything crazy, you know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little reserved on the articulation portion of this review. So let's see here. I want to try this again. Yeah, as you can see, it, it dropped down a little bit more. But again, be very careful, please, please be very careful with this guy. So after messing around with the hips for a little bit, I was able to get it to drop down a pretty nice amount, but it does take a lot of work. And also when I was doing it, the ball joint kind of popped out of, it didn't pop out all the way, but it popped out of the socket that's holding it. And then it kind of just would hang loose. Let's see if I can get it to do again. See, as you could see. I mean, and if you get it to do that, then you could uh, get it, get his leg to go all over. Uh, but, you know, that, that kind of sucks because then it just dangles there. But it did allow me to bring the peg down more. And then once I brought the peg down more, I was able to just stick the ball joint back onto the peg. And, and it left me a little bit more room to get his leg way up there. Same thing on this side. So you definitely have to work with it. And you can you can get it to come down more, and give you give you some more articulation in that leg, but it takes a lot of work, man. So please be patient with it, mess around with it, but uh, just don't ruin your figure. So that's that's it there. Anyways, let's get let's get on with it. So he does have double jointed knees. That's awesome. He does have rotation at the lower leg, rotation at the foot, and he also has the. Rocking ankles, they're a little hindered because of the armor pieces there. And then for his arms, he has ball jointed shoulders that can go all the way around. They could come out to the side. Upper bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows. They only go to about there though because of the, the uh, forearm guard. But that does swivel around as I mentioned before. And then you have a swivel at the wrist and a hinge at the wrist. And there's no type of shoulder swivel or anything, but you know, that's all right. So yeah, I think that's it for the articulation. It does have a really good amount, but you know, you, you could only expect so much with, from a figure like this that has a bunch of metal on it. You know, a lot of things are going to be restricted and you know, if, if you're too crazy with it, you're going to cause paint chipping and pos possibly uh, damage your figure and nobody wants that. So anyways, that's it for the articulation. So overall, I'm really happy with this figure. I think that Mezco did an incredible job with it. I love the way it looks. It has a high quality feel to it. I love the matte and the gold colors and how they, they kind of contrast each other. They look awesome. And this figure has me really excited about the standard version and the stealth version. I've always been a fan of the stealth Iron Man. So I'm, I can't wait to get my hands on those guys. But yeah, this thing is amazing. It, it's a shame that it's, you know, that it was such a limited release because I know a lot of people like these colors for Iron Man. Like I said, it's not really accurate to the uh, Mark 42 or Make 42, whatever you want to call it. But it does, I mean, for me it's close enough. I guess I'm just not as uh, strict when it comes to these different Iron Man armors because they, a lot of them kind of look the same to me except for like uh, some of the ones that have drastic differences like Hulkbuster Iron Man or the Extremis Iron Man. But for the most part, when you get down to it, a lot of them look very similar to me. So uh, I'm a little forgiving when it comes to the um, the accuracy here but i know that that's not uh, how everyone's gonna feel and that's okay but for me personally i do love this figure a lot i'm very happy to have it i love all of the accessories i do wish that the hips were a little bit better those things do feel i guess you could say flimsy um that, that might that might be too strong a word but i do feel like they can break if you're not careful so be very careful with those uh just to reiterate that i know i said it a couple times in this review but i just want to emphasize how how careful you should be when you're handling this figure and one more thing i wish he would have came with is some kind of tool to remove the face mask and the arc reactor because at first those things are st really stuck on there and they're very hard to remove so it's a little uh nerve-wracking when you're trying to get those things off and you know you just open the figure you're all excited 
excited about it and uh, you're kind of rushing you don't want <laughs> to rip the face mask off and snap it in half or something so I, I do wish there was some kind of tool to remove those things but uh, if you're careful you could work it out so it is what it is but anyways I'm very happy with this figure I love it it's probably going to be one of my it's definitely going to be in my top 10 probably very near to the top spot when it comes to my top 10 figures at the end of the year but uh, yeah we'll see anyways thank you so much for watching and also if you want to support the channel I do have some t-shirts for sale on Teespring and I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys would like to check those out um, you know I think they're pretty cool one of my boys designed the logo for me I'll leave a link to his uh, information in the description below as well and uh, yeah if you want to support just check those things out right there and uh, yeah I believe that's it so thank you very much for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff and thank you very much peace